Your six-year-old boy has a fever and a rash. You ask ChatGPT what the current dose of aspirin would be for a 40-pound child. Three weeks later, after being in an intensive care unit with a very sick boy, you wish you had got more information from a healthcare provider than relying on ChatGPT. I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior, where we make videos to help seniors understand AI. This is a 10-part series that I'm making on understanding AI in the over 50 age group. Episode one was, of course, setting up Microsoft Copilot, Gemini, and ChatGPT. Episode two was understanding prompts. This is episode three, and I'll put the links down below to those prior videos and to the playlist that will have the whole series on it. But this is episode three, and why you should not ask, or you should be very careful if you ask AI for medical advice. So this is an episode I'm so excited to make because I was a medical doctor for 30 years. Yes, and I got to dust off my old lab coat now and to uh, put my MD coat on and give some advice on AI and medical information. So let me tell you about a little trick that healthcare providers learn very early on in their career. If I had a new patient come to my office and I saw them in the waiting room, I would observe them. I would watch them coming down to my office. I would watch them come into the office and sit down in front of me. I could see them. I could see what clothes they wore. I could see their eye contact, how they smelled, how their, what their age was. I most likely could diagnose the problem before they even started the conversation. This is very difficult to do if you are a bot and to try and get that information if you aren't there in person. Now, the advice I'm going to give you today is if you have a health problem, my advice is to get advice from a healthcare provider. We are not there yet, folks. We aren't there yet where you can just talk to AI and it's going to diagnose a medical problem. Even worse is if it gives you advice, this advice is often wrong based on a number of factors which we're going to discuss today. Please, if you are sick, get advice from a healthcare professional. All right, what is AI in healthcare? Well, of course, we use AI to analyze data. So, so AI systems can analyze medical data, they can predict outcomes, and support cl clinical decisions. Uh, common examples are the information that you get when you use chatbots. But chatbots get their information from the general, from basically the internet. And although they try to analyze symptoms and actually have some diagnostic tools, the results are often very different depending on what circumstances you're using them in. In the first example I gave you today, that was RISE syndrome. You certainly want, wouldn't, wouldn't want to use aspirin in a child with a fever and a rash because you're worried about a combination of aspirin and chickenpox, which can give you a very fatal condition called RISE syndrome. You should know that before giving advice, and I'm sure a healthcare professional would. And always remember that AI is not a doctor. AI lacks human intuition and clinical experience, as I said when I watched patients walk down the hall. It cannot consider unique patient context and emotions. It relies on data quality and may not accurately account for the rare or nuances in each case. So we have to be very careful with the information that we get when using AI. Now, the risk of asking AI for medical advice are the dangers of misuse. Now, it may be limited by the quality of the training data. It may not represent diverse populations. There's a lot of people around the world asking it, and it may the may, data may be different depending on what country you're in and certainly what population subset that you're looking at. And there's no standard oversight in any of the AI tools that we have. They're made up by all sorts of different bots and different companies that have these the software. And the absolute worst thing that could happen is a common situation now with AI, and it's called ghosting. 
And what happens is, of course, if it doesn't know the answer, you know it makes it up. So that is another huge problem that and it's often not easily identifiable. Now, the other thing that comes in are ethical considerations about trust, privacy, and accountability. Uh, you're often putting information into the system. Remember, it's all going into the cloud and you're sharing sensitive data with AI systems that have no respect of your privacy. So who's responsible for errors or potential misuse of AI generated advice? Where is the liability? Let's talk about real life consequences. When AI advice goes wrong, who's responsible? In the first case I gave you about AI led advice that harmed patients, in other words, that young child could have been, uh, could have died, you, you need to discuss, we need to talk about the psychological impact on the families that did put their faith in AI and got bad critical health decisions. So the right way to use AI in healthcare is to use AI as a tool and not a replacement for good medical advice. Use AI for education and support, not final decisions. Although you still have to remember that we that the information from AI is gleaned largely from the internet. And if you had, let's take, um, let's take the, let's take an example of vaccinations. You probably would find a huge body of information about vaccinations on the internet compared to a very small amount of medical data that is actually peer reviewed by healthcare providers. There's a big discrepancy there, but AI doesn't really have a way of dealing with that. So the information that you get on vaccinations may be very uh, jaundiced or very biased in one, one, one way or another. So you have to be extremely careful. Always come and always contact a qualified health care professional for proper diagnosis and treatment. So in conclusion, we have to look at responsive use of AI in medicine. AI has potential, but must be used cautiously. Ex your health deserves expert care, not just algorithms. Always prioritize humor and expertise for medical advice. I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Hopefully this has given you some help in trying to deal with that difficult decision on how to use AI for medical information. Stay tuned for part four coming up. The next episode will be episode four and it will be how to stay more productive by using AI. By clicking that like and subscribe, you'll be sure not to miss that very exciting episode. Till we see you again, have a great day.